Hi, I'm Tom and in this tutorial I will show you how to create a simple parametric table family in Revit. We'll be creating a table like this, which is really simple geometry, but we'll learn how to make it parametric. We'll also learn uh, the difference between type parameter, which behaves like this, so that I have table and I can have different types of tables. And I can switch between them and instance parameter which behaves like this so that when I have table I have table length and table width and I can change them as I wish there are no preset values and then I will also show you how to uh, have instance parameter with handles like this so that I don't have to change the numerical values I can change the length and the width of the table only with these handles. Okay, let's get started with a new family and we will use the basic metric furniture template. And in this template we've got two reference planes. This will be the center of the table and we will create reference planes of our own. So we will start creating reference plane. And I prefer not to have too many weak or strong reference planes. So I will set this to be not a reference. And I will create one, two, three, four. And this will be the basic shape of our table. Because we want to have this to be the center, we will go, we will create a line dimension from this line to this line to this line. Now we will make it equal so that these two planes are within the equal distance from this plane. We will do the same here, make it equal. Okay. Now let's uh, look at the table from the front view, we've got a reference plane here, again reference level, and we will create a new reference plane, and I will name it, this will be the top of the table, and I will also create the next reference plane, which will be the bottom of the table desk, and the bottom of the strut or support. Okay, and so these are three reference planes. Let's go to the plan view again. And now let's create our parameters. So let's open the family types uh, window. And here uh, we've got our parameters and we can create new parameter here. We will create three table width, table depth and table height. So let's start creating parameter and you can see here that we can choose whether the parameter is type or instance. We will start with creating the type parameters. So let's create parameter table width. Click OK. Now let's create second table depth. And let's create third table Okay, so we've got these three parameters set up and we can uh, now click OK and we will create again a line dimension here like this. And now when we click on the dimension here on the label uh, tab we can select this drop down and choose the table width. And it will automatically add the, the width that we currently have there. Let's do the same here for the table depth. Okay. And also in the front view, let's create. Uh, dimension here 
and let's let's make it uh, table height okay let's go to the plan view again and let's try if uh, if these parameters work it's called flexing and when we go to the family types window again and we change the table depth from this one to let's say 14 100 and click OK. You can see that the planes have been moved. I can also check the table width. I can change it to 900, click apply and you can see that both of the planes work as I wanted them to. Okay, let's try from the front view. Let's try flexing the, the height. Let's change the height to 700, click apply. You can see that this one, uh, this one reference plane has moved, but these two have stayed at their original places. So we have to log them in relation to this reference plane. So I will set the table height to 1000, click OK. So this is my top plane. And I will create two dimensions one from this plane to this plane let's just change the scale quickly and then another dimension from this plane to this plane this will be the uh, height of the table the, the, the tabletop so let's make it 30 and this one will be the support height, so let's make it 50. Now, when I try to flex the height, Revit has already made these locked. Um, sometimes Revit does this automatically, but it's better to be sure to click the little lock here next to the dimension so you are sure and you don't you are not uh, you are not relying only on what that uh, revit does automatically so now let's try to let's try to flex it again so now in the plan view we'll finally start to create some geometry of the table so on the create uh, tab we will start with creating extrusion and I will do the rectangle and I will snap to this intersection and snap to this intersection and uh, Revit automatically locks these lines to these reference planes but to be sure I prefer to lock them manually like this so I'm not relying only on what Revit wants to do I will finish the edit mode and I will look and it from the front view and you can see that the, the tabletop is on the floor so with these handles I will drag it to the top and here I will lock it again now I will drag it here to the bottom of the tabletop and I will lock it here okay so now in the plan view let's try to flex the table again so that we can see that it works with our geometry the same when in the front view let's change the height you can see that it works as we want it to okay let's continue with creating the table legs so we will create extrusion again we'll pick the rectangle tool and we will start here at this corner and create the first leg now we want to be to have the size 50 by 50 but we want it to always be also locked to the reference plane so we have to create dimensions from the reference plane to here and lock this dimension and from the reference plane to here and lock this dimension okay now uh, let's continue creating the second stool 
uh, second leg, third leg, oops, fourth leg, and let's do the same. Let's do the same thing. Sometimes it's a bit tedious creating the parametric families, but uh, you just create them once and then they work always. So we have to do this by hand. We cannot, you know, copy or mirror it because then it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't behave parametrically. So I'll do this, I'll do this and lock it. I'll do this. Let's lock it and like oops what was that i don't know it's important to lock it from the reference plane and not from the from the extrusion okay it's always better to have the to have the locks from the reference planes than from existing geometry sometimes you can do it from the existing geometry as i will show you later Okay, so all of these are uh, locked and let's finish creating this extrusion. Let's go to the front view and let's drag the top to the bottom of the table desk and lock it again. Okay, so now the table, the table looks like this. And let's try flexing again. So in the plan view, I will try change the table depth and you can see the legs because they are locked they move with the size of the table let's try from the front let's change the height and you can see even the height works as we wanted to because we locked it let's continue with creating these struts so again in the plan view I will create extrusion with the rectangle tool. I will start here and finish here. And let's lock this line here. And let's lock this line here. And now up to these lines. I want to lock them again to this reference plane. So I will start the line dimension and create this one here and this one to, to here let's change the scale just quickly and i want to have this to be just 10 millimeters and i will lock the dimension and i want this one to be 30 millimeters and again i will lock oops i will lock this dimension Okay, now let's continue. So like this, let's lock this one. Let's lock this one. Create, I'm using the DI shortcut to create a line dimension. Let's make this 10 and lock it. And let's make this 30, hit escape, select the dimension and lock it again now i'm here now i can lock this one if uh if you don't lock it right now you hit escape and you want to lock this again here if you click on the line the lock doesn't show up you can use the align tool and choose align to this line from this line and when you align them the lock shows up and you can click on the lock and lock it so you don't have to lock it from the from the start now let's create dimension here dimension here let's select this line make it 10 this line make it 30 and sometimes the lock is quite far away from the dimension, so you have to zoom out. And again, let's do this one. Lock it. Lock it. And let's make dimension di. 
plus one, let's do ten. Let's lock it and make it thirty. And lock this dimension. Okay, so now we're done here. We can finish the edit mode. And if we look at it from the front view, again we will lock the heights so we can go up here and lock the height. We can go up here and lock again. If I escape from here and I forget to uh, to lock the height, I can do it like that so that I can drag it down here again and drag it up here and lock it again okay now let's try flexing again so when we change the table height to 700 you can see that even the support is flexing and in the plan view let's change the height and do it okay let's save the project and i will save it to my desktop and i will name it parametric uh, table okay so the table looks and works properly and now let's imagine that uh, you are creating table of a certain manufacturer and the manufacturer creates this table only in these three uh, types with certain width depth and height so we will create these three types of the table so now let's go to the types fam uh, family types the window and let's create a new type and we will name it type a and as you can see here, the type A has width 1200. So I will change the width to 1200, depth 800, and height 720. Okay, so this is our type A table. Now let's create a new type, name it type B. And type B is 1400 by 900 by 720. So depth is 900, width is 1400, and uh, the height stays the same. And type C is 1800 by 900 by 750. So let's create a new one. Type C. So depth is 900, width is 1800 and the height is 750 okay so now when we click apply on the type c it looks like this when we change to type b it looks like this and when we change it to type a it looks like this the dimensions flex as we have set them for the for the specific table type Okay, so the parametric table family is finished and now we can check out how we will behave in a project. So we will start a new project. I'll start metric architectural template. I will create a simple floor. And let's go to our family and let's load it into the project. And place it here. And when I zoom in on the table, you can see when I click on it and I click here, I can see these three types and I can change it from type A to B to C. And I can copy, oops, sorry, I can copy the table. And in this one project, I can have multiple different types so this can be type a this can be type b this can be type c so this is a type parameter it behaves like this and now uh, let's uh, let's see how the instance parameter behaves so 
we will go to our family again and we will create a copy so I will go to save as family and I will name it parametric table instance I will save it okay now here I will go to the family types window and I will change these parameters from uh, type parameters to instance so I can click the, click the uh, parameter and go to edit parameter and I will change it from type to instance I will click OK this one I will also change from type to instance and this one I will change from type to instance OK now here uh, when I've got these as instances it doesn't matter which type name I change it will stay the same okay so I can delete these types all of them so I will have only one type on this table okay so now when I try to flex the table here oops, it uh, works the same it flexes but it will work differently in our project so I will save this file and load it into the project and place it here now when I click on the table and I click this drop down you can see that there's only one type but here in the uh, in the properties uh, panel I can see the table depth, table height and table width and I can change them from here directly and the table flexes when I copy the table I'll use the shortcut CO and I will copy it again because it's uh, instance parameter every instance of the table can be different they've got no relation between each other okay so I can change the size of this one I can change the, the size of this one and all of them are different so this is instance parameter whereas type parameter I've got types and I can show you one more thing when we've got these two tables let's change this table to type A and I can change the types even from my project so when I click the table I can go to edit type and I've got table depth height and width here and when I change the table width of the type A table to 2000 and click OK all of the type A tables in the project change so that's the difference between type parameter and instance parameter instance parameter it's shown here on the properties panel and uh, all of the tables can be different whereas the type parameter is changed from the edit type and when I change uh, type parameter of one type all of those in my whole project change with this one the last thing that I will show you is how to create uh, instance parameter with handle and sometimes it's useful not to change the instance uh, instance parameters by numerical values but to have handles here so we will go to our family again and we will create another copy so i will go to save as family and i will name it uh, parametric table instance handle and to create handles that you have seen in the beginning of this tutorial these reference planes I've told you to set them as not a reference but if we change them to either strong, weak, left, right, front, back 
it doesn't matter either of these will work so we can change them to strong let's make this one uh, right let's make this one uh, left and to see that it works let's make this one strong and this one strong too we could make them back and front but we will show it i will show it like this now let's save this family load it into the project and place it here and you can see that when i click on the table i've got these handles here and i can stretch the table and its instance the dimensions here change i can also change the dimensions here numerically and they change accordingly okay so it behaves like an instance parameter only the difference is that I can change the parameter with these handles too and also with the numbers. Okay, so this was a tutorial. We have created a parametric table. I hope this helps and take care.